Hi, everyone, and welcome to Life Masters TV. I'm very excited today because we have Russell Reynolds here today. Russell's been actually, you've been a friend of mine for a long time. Yeah. And I follow this journey that you've been on. And, you know, one of the things that I love most about doing this show yeah. is that um, discovering people's incredible and inspirational stories. Mm. And yours is one of them. Thank you. So we're going to start at the beginning. Thank you. And, okay. And um, I want to know... Yeah. First of all, you're a life coach, uh -huh. you're a personal trainer, uh -huh. and you I know that you innately feel like you're on this planet to help others yes. and to inspire others, and you're really good at it. Thank you. And when you were younger, like when you were a kid and you're, you're growing up, and did, did you know that this is something that you might want to do as you got older? Uh, well, I mean, it depends on what age you're talking about. I mean, as a young boy, I went through all the you know, usual career options that most young boys go through, ninja, superhero, uh, fireman, like, like these right. are all the things that, yeah, you know, of course. but, uh, it was something that was always just kind of part of my DNA. You know, I, yeah. I was always the, the, the kid with the perspective and the people would come to talk to. And, you know, and as I grew up, uh, my own path of suffering mm -hmm. and the people that helped me made me want to give that back, you know, and... Now, when you say your own path of suffering, like, what does that mean? Did you go through something quite traumatic when you were... Uh, which part? I don't know. <laughs> you said path yeah, of suffering. Yeah, well, I, I, I mean, mean I think pretty... everybody has suffering. My parents divorced when I was three. Okay, You yeah. know, and even as a little boy, even though it's not, has nothing to do with me, every child is going to think it has something to do with them. What's wrong with That's me true. if he's leaving? Yeah. I, my dad left, so I was raised with my mom and my sister, um, who had both loved both of them dearly. Uh, but that also kind of, uh, which in, in hindsight, such a blessing because it helped me get in touch with, with my feminine side, my sensitive side. And before any you know, macho men get all weirded out by that, look, we all have masculine and feminine. And if you don't have a balance, if you don't have a foothold in each world, then you're really kind of missing half the show. And I think that, that, that there are feminine qualities, like the ability to listen. Hey, there's a cool idea. I know, right? <laughs> right. No, it's so true. You know, the sensitivity to develop. But the, the, the flip side, you know, the, the struggle with that is, is growing up in rural Texas, that made me a mama's boy, that made me a sissy, and, you know, according to others, right? And so are you saying that because your parents split, you ended up living with your mom? So that's right? really what happened. Yeah. So you had a lot of your mother's influence on you influence as you were a child. Mm -hmm. And even dealing with the divorce was quite traumatic for you. Sure. as totally understandable. Yeah. So through that, you sort of had your own life difficulties, struggles to kind of get. and But you became in touch with your feminine side. I became in touch with that feminine or sensitive side. Yeah. And learning to listen and perceive things in a bigger way, you know, than... than you know, I think at that time, the definition of masculinity was you answer all questions mm -hmm. with your fists. Mm -hmm. And really, that's not very conducive to conversation. No. Not, not. a lot of people are going to want to talk to you if that's the way. Yeah. And, and, and again, I wasn't a fighter by nature at that age. You know, I was, I was scrawny. I didn't play sports. I didn't have good grades. I bought my clothes at Nerds R Us. I couldn't get a date if I paid for it, and I got beat up as a hobby. So, so when I say was... path of suffering, like this is totally, the crucible yeah. that that caused me to seek the warrior's path, to get into martial arts, to get into fitness, you know, to because I recognize that if there's anything I don't like about my life, it's only one person that can change it, not to me. Yeah. You know, so, so many times I feel like we look for other people to heal our wounds or for other people to fix our situation or our problem. And um, I, I have learned, too, that it's it, those that, that doesn't happen. It's no. really up to us. Yeah. And uh, it's a harsh, realistic way to sometimes find out that that's really the answer. But no one can change our life except for right. us. Right. Now, you can right? reach out for a hand for help. And somebody can help you. Yeah. But nobody else can fix you. Right. Nobody. Can, I don't fix anybody. Right. I, I don't. I just. I help people. I help people to find the greatness that's already inside of them. So this was you at what? At what age? High school. Uh, middle like, school. High school. Yeah. Middle school. So that was tough for you. Yeah. Very tough. Yeah. Um. And then because of that, you decided to get into martial arts and personal mm -hmm. training. Mm -hmm. And so well, how did that? Fitness. Yeah. Fitness. So, I mean, just working out. I just wanted to put some muscle on, so I wasn't so, you know. Right. Victim like. 
And what was that day? Do you remember that day when you were like, I am not going to be this anymore. I am going to change <laughs> this. I'm going to change my physicality. I, and I do. I do. Um, I remember one specific day there was one of the school bullies who was coming at me again. And I don't know what caused the thought, but I just had this awareness. What's going to happen if I fight back? I'm going to get my ass kicked. Well, that's already happening, so why not? And something switched. They had to pull me off of that kid. And like, like wow. just years of abuse and rage, like poor kid, just came right? Out. <laughs> he yeah. was just being the school bully, but no way. yeah, it just came out and that, that was the shift. That's so what was it like, like that day? What did, that, what did it feel like? It was, I mean, It was empowering and, and it wasn't about, to be clear, it's not about having power over somebody else, even though in that case, it was, but it was about taking my power back, recognizing that I even had power to create change in my life and that I didn't have to just take it. You know, whatever people are dealing with in their life, whether it's spousal abuse, emotional abuse, you know, work abuse, what, you don't have to take it. It's true. Right? You can stand up and say no. It's you very know? true. We can choose to be a victim or a victor. Mm -hmm. And I chose that day to be a victor. And you know what? I love hearing that story because that can relate into so many other facets of our lives. You know, how far somebody is pushed, the human spirit can take. That's what this is about. Okay, so tell me. Yeah, that's, tell well, me. I, I wrote Rusty uh, mm -hmm. as a children's book, but it's not really a children's book. This is a personal development book in disguise. It's got a message for all ages. I've had adults contact me crying after reading the book. And I read it to Ava. Yeah. And she loves it. Yeah, well, that's her copy. So that's. Yay, you know, okay, good. Yeah. That's I mean, her. I have yeah. one already, but I love that. I, well, we can okay. always use another one. Yeah. There you go. We can give it to somebody <laughs> else. But, <laughs> have to get uh, this book. It's, uh, you know, it, it follows the story of Rusty, a young circus elephant who was named after the chain he was bound by. And I, I was inspired to write the book when I heard about how these young elephants are trained, how they're shackled with these big, heavy mm -hmm. chains, and they pull and try to get away, but they can't. Obviously, their chain's too big, they're too small. Eventually, they stop trying. And from that moment forward, even as full-grown adult elephants, they're held in place with this tiny, thin rope attached to a little wooden stake. Now, they can snap it in half and rip the whole circus tent down if they want, but they don't because they don't believe they can. Now, I wow, heard that, that I'm like, so wow, crazy. Right? what a metaphor for our lives. Yes. How many of us are chained to a job, a circumstance, a relationship, a belief system that we think is this unbreakable chain in reality, tiny, thin rope? So the story. I, I follow privy to that too. So yeah, yeah all I mean, of us. We all, all do. Us. Yeah. So you know, love it. The story follows Rusty, the young elephant, and his journey of self-discovery and eventual mm -hmm. empowerment through the circus of doubt, which is the system designed to keep him playing small. Wow. Right. So how many of us are dealing with our own circus of doubt? The biggest problem is it's here. Here, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's like uh, I think it was. Um, Marianne Williamson that said somebody told her the devil doesn't exist he's, he's only in your mind and she said that's the worst possible place he could be <laughs> <laughs> that's so that's true horrible. oh my right? goodness so yeah. our circus of doubt this is the worst place it could be I so love that it's about finding your strength you know no matter what your age is mm -hmm. right and breaking free to the life that you know is nice. possible that you hope is possible and we all know it's there like we all know there's so many of us out there struggling and we know deep down inside that we're worth so much more. We know deep down inside that we're able to do so much more. And, you know, the things that do stop us are just, it's thinking small, right. not believing, losing the hope, losing the faith. And sometimes life can beat you up a little bit, yeah. you know, and then you start to think small. So it's expanding your, your, your yourself and getting out of that. But I know right. that you're, I want to talk about your mom for a minute. I know that your okay. parents are like yeah. absolutely pivotal in your life. I know your dad was and your, your mom is. Yeah. Um, your mother was the founder of the, she the discovered creator. Yeah. the creator of the Amber Alerts. Yep. The which, Amber Alert for Missing Children. I mean, incredible. So how did that, so your mother now is, I mean, she's like an, she's an iconic, uh, sort of in, in a way iconic when it comes to helping people she's a and, and national changing. hero. Right. Yeah. Incredible. Global. Global. Yeah, because so, uh, there's over a thousand children in the U.S. alone that are alive today because of her idea and her willingness to follow through with it. And now it's in 27 other countries around the world. I mean, yeah. how did this affect you during the years that she was discovering it? And I mean, how, 
How did that come about? And how do you how did you find your place well, within a mother that has created this? Well, it's you can uh, and she's got a TED talk that explains a TEDx talk that explains mm -hmm. a lot about this, which I pushed her into doing. I set that up for her because amazing. As even, you know, she and I are best friends and she's always wanted to share this platform. And I'm like, you're not allowed to play small anymore. You're doing a TED talk. She's like, I'm doing what? <laughs> and I'd set the whole thing up. I'm like, done. Wow. So uh, there was a there was a young girl named Amber Hagerman in Arlington, Texas, who was broad daylight riding a bike in front of her front yard. A guy pulls up in a black pickup truck, grabs her off the bike, throws her in the truck, kicking and screaming her. She's never seen a live again. And that, as, as you can imagine, that's no. every parent's worst it's, nightmare. It's I don't worst even know nightmare. if I'd survive after that. Honestly. We didn't yeah. know the family at all, but we lived in the area and what it just broke mom's heart and she said the saddest thing of all is probably 50 people saw that black pickup truck pulling away but didn't know what they were looking at so if there was just some way to let people know some way to create a community-wide involvement and awareness so that was the and how impetus. old were you at this time when all that went down oh god i don't even remember but was, you were quite young yeah I mean, well it's a teenager okay um, yeah. yeah, yeah, late late teens, yeah, I think. Okay, and um, so you see her developing this, and, you yeah. know, where was she at in her life when all of this? She was, um, you know, it's funny, to this to this day, you know, she's, my, my mom is very humble, uh, keeps quiet, you know, she is a massage therapist, was then, is now, because it's what she loves. She's 74 years old, still doing massage therapy. You know, <laughs> I like, love I'm that. like, I love that. Go, mom. And she probably never talks about, you know, meanwhile, yeah. look what she's done. Yeah, she, well, when she did the TEDx talk, mm -hmm. she had clients go, You did what? Because she never told them. Yeah. So, what know, did, how, the, did, how old, did you, how were you affected by all of this? Well, I don't know that I had the presence of mind at the time that it happened. I was like, Wow, that's cool. But in retrospect, and now she is, like I said, she's my hero. And she's a shining example to me of how one person can make a difference and how it's never too late to rewrite your story. Because I remember at, as, a, as a young child, you know, just before uh, and going into teenage years, m mom was at a dark place. You know, she was a single mom raising two children by herself, working three jobs just to try to keep the lights on. And the stress was too much. She started drinking heavily. She hit rock bottom. It was it was the worst. And from that to go, no, this is not the end. This is this is one chapter in my book. It's not the end. And we all have that ability. So imagine that must have been a huge, profound effect on you. Oh yeah. Well, she and I she and I started kind of started our spiritual path together. We you know. Um, I remember she had called, uh, there was a service at the time called Dial a Prayer, and it was through Unity Church, mm -hmm. which is like a new age Christian church kind of thing. And um, she had called them for inspiration, and there was a message at the end. It was pre-recorded, but call this number if you need to speak to the minister. And she did, and they had a, like a two-hour conversation. And the next morning, she's like, it's Sunday morning, she's like, get up, kids, we're going to church. And we're like, who are you? <laughs> like what? Right, We're doing right, what? Right. And I took to it like a fish out of water. My sister, you know, she's like, okay, this is cool. But, but mom and I kind of started over at that point, right? We, we start our relationship and I found that's when I'm like, wow, this speaks to me. You know, this stuff speaks to me. And so you guys sort of went through this process together and how now it's evolved together. to this thing where your mom, I mean, saves thousands of children a year, probably hundreds of thousands. Well, this is know. the thing, and, and I would say this to anybody, no matter what you're going through, no matter how bad it is, it is not the end unless you quit. It's only the end if you decide it's the end, right? And to decide, right? S side, suicide, pesticide, herbicide, the word side means death, okay? So in Latin, it's death. So to decide is to... <laughs> Oh do that. It's, that's a good example of death. <laughs> sounds like that. That's possibly what it sounds like. I love, I love that that happened. <laughs> I love that that happened because it destroys the illusion of perfection. Well, that's true. Right? That is so true. And perfection is an illusion. So to decide is to cause death to or to cut off all other options. So if you're at rock bottom and you decide that's where you're at, this is your story, this is who you are, what a terrible decision because there's always more.
there's always another day. There's always another opportunity. And mm -hmm. my mom is an example of that to me, right? Rock bottom, you know, uh, alcohol, pain, stress, debt, whatever, whatever, whatever. And now from that, she's a national hero, global hero. She has impacted the lives of thousands and thousands of parents that she'll never meet. She's caused a ripple effect that has expanded around the world. So, Unbelievable. And I love how this is affected you, you as well. Right. 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 And so now you've become a, a life coach, but you're all about mind, body, and soul. You really do yeah. with your clients. You really take Absolutely. them on a journey and you're Absolutely. very, very good at what you do. Thank you. So yesterday or two days ago, you came to my house. We did a little commercial and you said that we were yeah. going to talk about the one thing that holds, right? The yeah. one thing that holds people back. Right. So I totally forgot what it was. <laughs> I, there was something really profound I was going to say. You totally forget what it no, was. No, I'm kidding. No, that's your, April, that's your April Fool's Day. Fool's Day. Yeah. <laughs> I told you I'd get to I was this like, one. you forgot? You're like a master at this. That's why you're on Life Masters. <laughs> um, <laughs> but you had me hang, and you didn't even tell me what it was. So you said the number one thing that holds people back, and I've been, you know, dying to know yeah. what it, like your perception of that. Give me an example of a, of a problem in your life or somebody else's where you're re hitting these obstacles and you're being held back or somebody else is being held back, like something you would think of. Oh, my goodness. Um, OK, so this is going to be an, a simple and easy one. Okay. Um, I have tried to quit drinking coffee <laughs> over and over and over again, and I can't. Just drink your coffee? Is that a boring one? That's a boring one. There's something okay. more profound. Okay. Come on. <laughs> and by right. the way, I see no reason to stop drinking coffee. Okay, coffee then so is I won't. Good, right? <laughs> Just get a healthy organic coffee. Okay, I okay, now I'm gonna get real with you guys. Okay. So Thank I you. um let life derail me mm -hmm. and then I'm like put off for like not put off as in emotionally put off. I I become self sabotaging for like a month. So something will happen in my life that I can't handle. Right. And then I don't know how to get back on track. So I could be like full on moving forward, all this energy going in the most amazing direction. And then something happens and I'm derailed for like three weeks. Yeah, I get it. So the one thing that is most common and there's, there's no carte blanche, there's no pan panacea for everything, right? But what most often is the case, the one thing holding people back is you don't think you're enough. <laughs> Right? <laughs> but if we're yeah, going to get vulnerable no, no, and real, no, I know, I know. Why yeah. else would that derail you? Right? If if we'll use the metaphor of a boxing match, right? Yeah. If if your goal going into a boxing match is to never get hit, you've already lost. You're going to get hit. Of course mm -hmm. you're going to get hit. You know, the whole rocky speech, not how hard you can hit, it's how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward. Right? Mm -hmm. So, we get these, you know, left hooks that come out of nowhere. But why would that derail us? Why would we quit the fight unless we believe that we're not good enough to win? Right? I'm, gonna think, so, I'm gonna have to think about that. Yeah, right. I'm gonna put some thought into that. Right, but Tony Robbins says our number one fear of everybody is that we're somehow not good enough and we're not mm -hmm. gonna be loved because of it. We're not good enough, we're not smart enough, we're not young enough, we're not old enough, we're not rich enough, we're not educated enough. Whatever it may be, it all boils down to not good enough. Yeah. and. What's the result of that? We're not going to be loved. We're not going to get the job. We're not going to, you know, we're, we're going to be ridiculed. We're not going to get the girl. We're not going to get the guy. We're not going to get the. Yeah, it's all based on fear. I mean, it's it really is. It's all based on fear of yeah. not being good enough. I go and into like I, scarcity mode. I am, I am raising my hand that this is something I know well. This is something that held me back for a majority of my life. Yeah. Right? Started when dad left. That seed was planted then. If I'm good enough, why did he leave? I don't understand what I did. Yeah. Right? And still that's raw. So like you've, still carried, you've feel... carried that with you for most of your life. It's like, right. Yeah. And a belief is nothing more than a thought that we think over and over again. Mm -hmm. Right. If I believe that, I will continually look for examples to verify it. I will continually look for opportunities in my life to prove that to be true. Then that belief system goes, see, I told you so. Yeah. And what do we do? We shrink. We shrink from our glory. What's the, the, the quote that's uh, it, so, uh, it's so often attributed to Nelson Mandela? It was actually Marianne Williamson who said it, that it is our light, not our dark, darkness, that most frightens us. 
Right? Mm. You think, who yeah. am I to be brilliant, to be beautiful, to be wonderful? Who are you not to be? It's true. Right? It's true. And us shining, there's, there's no grace or glory in shrinking so that others don't feel afraid. In fact, when we shine our light, it gives others permission that's to do the same. That's very true. There's a lot of us out there that know that, that right. that's why we're here, is to do that. Right. And you, you're now stepping up. Like, you've gone through all the stuff that you've gone through. And look at, look at what you're doing. Thank right? you. Yeah, Thank because you. this is about making a difference, right? Which I think is, is human nature if we allow it. It's mm -hmm. actually divine nature if we allow it. True. Right? It is the nature of the universe. It is the nature of all things that are natural to give. Right? We talk about Tony Robbins. Again, I'll reference him a lot because he's such an inspiration for me. The six human needs, regardless of culture, continent, or language, we all share these same six human needs. Not wants, not kind of like to haves. These are primal needs. One of them is contribution. Right? And this is the need of spiritual fulfillment. Right? And, and the reality is everything in the universe is either, either giving to something mm -hmm. greater than itself or it becomes extinct. A great example of this is the Dead Sea in Israel. You familiar with it? You've heard oh, of yeah, yeah, Dead yeah. Dead Sea, right? Where people float because mm -hmm. there's so much salt. Mm -hmm. It's also called the Dead Sea because there's nothing living in it. It's not right. alive. Right. Do you know why? Because it doesn't give. The Dead Sea is a beautiful metaphor for our hearts, for our lives, because... All bodies of water, all seas, all lakes, all tributaries, whatever, there's an intake and an output, right? It takes in water mm -hmm. and it lets it go. The Dead Sea does not. It holds it all. I'm right. going to keep this for myself and nobody gets any. So what are the others? If we can go through them quickly because we're the running out The six human needs? Yeah. Oh, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, so the, uh, the first need is certainty or you could call that growth or, or excuse mm -hmm. me, not growth. I'm getting ahead of myself. Uh, certainty or comfort or security. We all have to have a level of security or comfort, knowing that there's a roof over our head, a meal on the table, whatever mm -hmm. it may be. Right? The second is variety or uncertainty. Right? Because if we knew what every moment of every day was going to be, it would be like Groundhog's Day. We'd be bored out of our minds. The third is, is significance, which is huge because people will live and die for significance. Number one reason yeah, anybody so quits true. a job, lack of significance, lack of recognition or validation. The fourth is love and connection, which they're put together, but they're not the same thing. People want love, they'll settle for connection. Right? Or as Chris Rock said, two crackheads will stay together forever. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> it's not love, that's connection. Yeah. Misery loves company, that's connection. Right? People want love, but they're afraid of love. Mm -hmm. I loved once I got hurt. So I, uh, again, we're shrinking. We're letting fear make our decisions for us. And by the way, anytime you've let fear make decisions in your life, how's that worked out? Yeah, it doesn't work out too well. Not so good. That's for sure. Funny how we forget that in the mm -hmm. moment. So true. Right? And then the fifth and sixth are growth and contribution. Everything is either growing or dying. Mm -hmm. Stagnation is an illusion. There's no holding still. You're either growing or you're dying. So growth is a spiritual need. Uh, contribution is a, spir a spiritual, spiritual need. need. Right? And we can meet all of those needs in a positive way, a neutral way, or a negative destructive way. So when somebody, this, and this was a big switch for me when I shifted from personal training into more of the life coaching, into more of the body, mind, and spirit, is people say they want results and they're training really hard and then they sabotage them. Well, why is that? Because they're getting their needs met through the way they are right now. So unless mm -hmm. I help them find a new way to meet those needs in a healthy, positive way, mm -hmm. the behavior is not changing. Right. Whatever it is, whether it's coffee, right? <laughs> I Which know, I'm, self -sabotage I'm a big fan of. Or, yeah. Smoking cigarettes, drinking alcohol. <laughs> if you're not getting your needs met in a different way, that behavior is not going to change. Well, listen, I could honestly talk to you for hours. I feel like I, mean, I just took I just, over the whole thing. I no, I love it. I, I absolutely love <laughs> it. I, I just, I know that um, we have to get going, but I, yeah. I don't want to go. I think this has been, I feel bad for even having to rush you along, but um, there was, it was so, so amazing. Thank you so much Pleasure. for sharing. Um, where do, if, if I want to, like, where do clients and stuff reach out to you? Where uh, can we find you? I've got a website, which is actually kind of being redone. So I've got a basic, basic website right That's now, okay. grussellreynolds.com. Um, let me, I told you I would tell the story of the G. My first name is George. I go by Russell. I have my whole life. I was named George after my father. Mm-hmm. 
Again, they divorced when I was three. So he and I had a fractured relationship for a lot of years. But when he was diagnosed with terminal cancer, I put the G back in front of my name to honor him and facilitate healing between us before he passed. Nice. Which he did. So I didn't just change my name to George because people would be like, who, what, what? So G Russell Reynolds. Dot com G R U S S E L L, always two L's. If you ever meet a Russell that spells his name with one L, he's a doppelganger shooting. <laughs> they don't exist. <laughs> okay. Right? It's always but two also, L's. we can reach you on Instagram. Instagram so we can direct G message Russell you. Reynolds, yeah. And also Facebook. Also Facebook. So yeah. great. Same all right. name on all three platforms. And check us out. Check out the Life Masters podcast this on iTunes. Doing great things. Thank you. We both are. Yes. Agreed. And uh, yeah, thanks for, so much for coming on the show. Appreciate you. All right. Thanks. Again, the podcast is on iTunes, um, Life Masters TV, and our website is, is on its way as well. Very excited at uh, sharing wonderful stories and words of wisdom and a whole lot of inspiration. So thanks so much, Russell. Thank you. Too. Until the next Life Masters show.